Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. Finally made it out here to the weekend. It is the Earthmaster out here about 10 p.m. California time, May 16th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a 1.8 earthquake there across the uh, looks like northern California region. Notice a little bit of swarming going on there across northern California. That is around the uh, Mendocino Triple Point boundary, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. I want to show you guys a tremor map here tonight. Check this out. Almost eight, 800, almost 800 epicenters of tremor for a daily count. We're getting up there. Uh, this may be exceeding the previous counts far as daily counts go back in 2004. Uh, looks like a uh, similar event. Uh, looks like the last one maybe happened back there in 2022. Uh, so we're getting up there in the number of counts here. This brings up our total tally. Uh, up above almost 6,000 epicenters of tremor. Uh, that is along the Cascadia subduction zone. And uh, the majority of it looks as though, I just want to do the day right here, uh, is still around the southern end. A little bit noticeable up here across the northern end around Seattle as well. Um, let's check out the earthquakes out there across northern California, see what we got, because it's starting to light up out here across this region. Uh, got about uh, oh, six earthquakes or so in the last 24 hours. Very shallow crustal quakes. I call these uh, uh, strain quakes here. This is the Mendocino triple point boundary. The uh, Technically the plate boundary between three different plates here. The Pacific plate to the south here. Uh, the Gorda plate, which is a, technically a part of the Juan de Fuca plate over here. And then the North American plate begins right about here as well in that triple point boundary. And that is under quite a bit of strain. This is the area that had a uh, seven pointer. Uh, what was that, 7.2, 7.3? Um, the end of um, last year, but the beginning of December. Um, so this area obviously getting uh, some strain built up here because of the tremor that's accumulating down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia, uh, further pressurizing and adding uh, you know, strain across that area. Uh, it's definitely amplified. Up around Seattle area, there's a number of tremors as well. Uh, far as earthquake activity goes up there, I'm not seeing anything of abnormal activity. Nothing elevated yet. Just a couple smaller microquakes out there. There was one earthquake further up the line there, just around the northern end of the Cascadia for a three-pointer earlier this morning. But uh, just kind of watching this closely here, folks, because there is a lot of uh, stress and pressure being applied out here against the Pacific Northwest and Northern California right now because of that tremor. Uh, the Bay Area, pretty quiet. Nothing major going on there. Some earthquake activity around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's some hydrothermal plants there taking advantage of the heated areas below. Southern California, well, Southern California is been uh, staying low-key, so to speak, out here in terms of earthquake activity. Nothing above 2.5 and really only a, a handful of smaller microquakes out there across many given fault systems out here. One just off the San Andreas Fault, but uh, been pretty quiet out here compared to the past, you know, several weeks or so, even months if we go back last year. It was quite elevated out here, but it's going through these little periods here. Seems like when things are elevated up north, Southern California is quiet and vice versa. So we'll see if this doesn't flip flop here in terms of uh, strain accumulation or uh, earthquake activity here soon, but definitely keep an eye up north. A lot of uh, tremor happening down there into the subduction zone. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes up there. We got nine of them. So let's go double check. See what we have here. Where's my Yellowstone? Yellowstone overview. Make sure we got the most recent date. Looks like that swarm that was stirring up out here uh, late last night, early morning time period, is uh, continuing. Uh, kind of in the shadow of, I believe that's some wind or some uh, thunderstorm activity earlier. The, the earthquakes themselves are right there in the red lines. And it doesn't look like it's died off completely. So we still got an earthquake swarm going on there across Yellowstone National Park. Uh, mainly looks like it's around the Maple Creek area, but also I'm noticing some movement down here across Mary Lake as well with some more defined uh, earthquake activity there across that station. 
uh, here in the last 24 hours. So the USGS, uh, just reporting a handful of them. They normally don't uh, accumulate all the counts as far as the earthquakes that are happening out here. They got nine of them, but there's probably a lot more than that. Not going to count them. But uh, they're all pretty small. Nothing big. Um, just kind of a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Uh, Texas or uh, Kansas. What's going on out there in Kansas again? That's like the second earthquake here in the last couple days. This one a little bit further up north. Um, trying to think what's out there. Let's see. Does Kansas have any uh, gas and oil fields out here? I, I don't know. Last time I was up there, I didn't see any. A lot of uh, beautiful countryside out there. Some rolling hills. Not flat. 2.4 in the last hour out here. I uh, don't see any gas or oil fields listed out there. Near Blue Mound. Looks like maybe some mountain ranges out here, it looks like. It is in the zone that's really not uh, um, hazardous in terms of the earthquake potential. It's very minimal at that. But this is like the second earthquake here in the last seven days around this region. Uh, I believe that's firmly a sign of the North American plate on the move. We've been seeing it happen all across the east, all across the oil fields, the west coast, inland, the Yellowstone, North American plate. When it's on the move there, we can see these odd earthquakes pop up from time to time. Um, nothing big going on there across the New Madrid seismic zone for now, but it's been a fairly active area as well. Nothing there in the last 24 hours. Got one earthquake out in the um, Texas oil fields, but you see what they did here, and I talked about that this morning. They've adjusted the threshold uh, in how it reports the earthquakes here. Now, it looks as though they turned off any earthquakes that occur below 3.0 and above. I guarantee you, um, for every three-pointer, we should see a number of twos and a number of ones, like it has been. We look at this map every single day, I've been doing it for many years. We go back the last 30 days. It shows, you know, many ones, many twos. There's always ones and twos that are happening out here on any given day. So whether it's a weekend thing or maybe to, maybe a permanent thing, but they've adjusted that threshold. We're not seeing earthquakes that occur under 3.0 magnitude now. So we'll see uh, what happens Monday, but I've noticed it. Can't, uh, can't get past me on that. There's not just threes that happen out there. There's always smaller ones, and there's a lot. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's an earthquake in Northern California. Let's see, we, let's see what we got here for worldwide activity. Nothing big. A little bit of movement out there around Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico Trench starting to kick back up again. Looks like a four-pointer. Very close. To the trench zone and uh, the most recent quake there about 14 miles deep into that super deep trench uh, New Zealand let's see what's happening down there not a whole well some threes but nothing big going on still quite out here across Solomon Islands eastward along the plate boundary but uh, I'm sure that will fill in for sure one earthquake up here off the Nankai Trough. That's a 3.7. And a couple larger events there in the uh, towards the crunch zone. It looks like a couple fives there throughout the day today. 5.1. And it uh, looks like a 5.1. So two 5.1s happening out there across that area. Uh, literally within about 10 minutes or so of each other. I believe one of those is going to be the largest earthquake here in the last 24 hours. It goes to that 5.1. So earthquake activity in terms of larger movement, somewhat quiet today. And that's after the arrival of a high-speed solar wind stream. We'll get to that here in just a second. Java Trench fairly active as well. Some twos and threes, but really nothing big going on there. Mediterranean area. Typical movement happening out there. Uh, let's see. Really not see anything of abnormal. Well, we got another. Is that another one coming in to California? Three-pointer? Let's see here. Looks like it's just being reported. 
Yeah, 2206. So that just came in for another three pointer. Go figure, the Mendocino station there that monitors that data just went offline. But uh, yeah, that's a number of earthquakes out here in the last hour or so. And the tremor activity, remember that tremor activity is occurring uh, down here underneath Northern California. Uh, subduction zone trimmer about 45 kilometers deep there and when that takes place it lets it, it's only obvious that uh, the plate there is being further stressed and pushed down underneath this region that's what causes those tremors and it's not a slow it's not a uh, sudden release of pressure like an earthquake would be but a slow vibrational rub if you think about it between the two plates and that gives off a frequency that's being picked up as trimmer um, so that obviously stressing the area upstream there. That's why we're seeing so many earthquakes there right across Northern California right now across that Mendocino triple point boundary. I don't know if that's going to update itself or not. It's odd that it just went offline here. All right, uh, let's I'll check back on that here in just a minute. I want to show you guys um, space weather activity. Got a G2 class storm kicking up it looks like. Uh, it's since mellowed down. This was actually earlier this evening, up to a KP index, <coughs> excuse me, of six. Not, uh, it looks like that's died off here a little bit. We were seeing some roars down there across uh, Canada, Alaska area, maybe even some of the northern tier states, but I believe that's being suppressed right now. Uh, but there's the. Uh, there's a G2 storm that really wasn't forecast, forecasted. Uh, there was a, a G1 storm up here on the map uh, because of a coronal hole that's been facing us, number 48 here. Uh, but I don't know if this is from that high-speed so uh, that high-speed solar wind stream or not. It's just really odd. Let me uh, check out the real-time uh, solar wind stream here. Real. Hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. I knew I've looked at it before. I need to bookmark it. So let's see what we got here. What's the culprit? Why did this kick up all of a sudden? There's really no noticeable increase in speed. Um, a little bit of density. But nothing that would uh, make me believe that that was the high-speed solar wind stream that we're expecting here. Wasn't it? wasn't even supposed to come in tonight it's supposed to be in about a night or so tomorrow night or the next night so this is rather interesting i don't know where that came from but uh unless there was some type of uh cme that got blasted off here recently and and unaccounted for but uh, it was wide open here far as the btbz component of the interplanetary magnetic field with the bz pointing south now that has since closed back up, but it looks like it may start to, it looks like it's starting to open right here a little bit more. Once it's south of this line or below this line right here, then that allows the uh, amplification of the aurora. So that could continue off and on throughout the uh, evening. So watch for that if you're an aurora lover. Um, space weather, as far as flaring goes right now, fairly minimal down into the B flare category at B4.5. Uh, let's take a look here at the sunspots, 4087 here. Well, it's um, it looks like it's starting to decay right back over here. Not, not as complex within this area. Still a little bit back over here, but man, I, I had my hopes up for it. It did produce an X flare and a couple M flares, but then it just went uh, downhill. Not, not producing a whole lot, but I suppose we'll still watch that here as it is almost in the Earth-directed view couple other suns back sunspots back over here as well um, I don't think they're gonna produce any X flares maybe some CNM flare activity but uh, we'll keep an eye on the eastern area of the Sun these sunspots will continue to rotate into the earth directed view here in the days ahead Uh, seen some tornado activity out there today. That's going to continue through the overnight hours. There's still a moderate risk out there across the uh, Kentucky, Ohio area, Indiana, Tennessee. Big time tornado threats out there. Wind, big time wind, 
and some big time hail out there as well. So all forms of severe weather for your Friday night. Not going to be a night of rest out there for those folks, unfortunately. Uh, for tomorrow, for Saturday, that uh, looks like it mainly shifts there to the south, a little bit up into the northeast as well. Uh, got a little bit of tornado wind and some hail threats. This may change, may get upgraded here. It looks a little on the on the um, gentle side, so to speak, in terms of the severe weather potential. So that may change overnight. But uh, looks like Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas area back in on the mix tomorrow for some more severe weather. Yeah, look at that. I can't even. The Mendocino station here went offline. But so did San Juan Bautista and the Anza station here. All my California stations went offline for some reason. But uh, yeah, we got I'd say we got a little swarm going on out here, folks, and that's a result of the trimmer activity downstream. This is just the last 24 hours. In the last seven days here, it's been active. A lot of strain uh, being seen out here because of that trimmer. Been quite elevated down into that subduction zone of the Cascadia, so... Who knows? You know, I, I wish I was. I wish I could look at data back in 1700 when the last big earthquake happened out here, because I think tremor activity plays a major part in potentially producing or uh, forecasting the next big mega quake across the subduction zone. Um, I think it uh, uh, either really ramps up, right, uh, because that's how you add the, the strain out here between the the plate boundary. Got to force that plate underneath another plate uh, and um, build that momentum and steam. But I would love to be able to see the data, see what took place. If there was maybe some smaller quakes out here, or maybe a moderate quake, and then the big one just hit. But from what I hear, from what I've studied, the Cascadia doesn't produce, you know, four shocks like a five pointer or a six pointer. It just goes with a bang. You know, the southern end here, we could easily see a partial rupture of the Cascadia up to an 8.5. They happen on regular occurrences in between major events. Uh, major event is a uh, major event here is the full rupture of the Cascadia, uh, resulting in at least a 9.0 earthquake. And again, that last one was back in 1700, folks. So, all right, I'm going to bounce out of here. We'll keep an eye on things. Of course, I live out here in Northern California, so if anything happens here in the southern end or or the entirety of the uh, Cascadia, I will know about it personally. But uh, we'll just keep an eye on things. A lot of stress out here. It's showing from the west coast all the way inland. Utah, Nevada has been swarmed like crazy across northern area. Idaho, uh, now Yellowstone swarming. That's all a result of tectonic strain out here against the plate boundary. It's The pressure transfers well inland. And it's quite amplified right now. Have a good night. Enjoy your Friday night. Stay safe. We'll see you guys back out here for the Saturday morning update. Make sure you guys subscribe. And uh, if you could, click that like button. We'll see you guys out here in the morning.